Morning, Kal Kadosh. I hope all is well. Daf Pe Amud Aleph is today's daf. We're just going to start though on daf Ein Tet Amud Bet, the two dots, where it says if somebody is going to take out dio, which is ink, kivelich tov. So the shiur for him to be chayav is in order to write two different letters. Okay. So says daf Pe Amud Aleph. Tana we learned in a brayta. Shte otiot bidio, shte otiot bekulmus, veshte otiot bekalmarim. So it says over here that if somebody is going to take out two letters, if a person is going to take, take out two letters bedio, or two letters bekulmus, or two letters bekalmarin. So dio is if it's already of cut dio, which means it's even like a dope, it's like a powder, an ink powder. Okay, shteotio bekulmus means that he took it out when it's moist, right, to write it with a kulmus. And shteotio bekalmarin, kalmarin is keset sufer, which means... I don't know how it translates it over there. Um, number one. Doesn't matter which type of a derech where he's taking it out. I mean, even though, it, you know, you could actually write it now, or he has to, you know, even if it's left over, dio inside of the... How do you translate the keset to sofer in English? The quill? No? Or inkwell? Ink the inkwell, that's what it is, the inkwell. So the keset sofer is the inkwell, and the quill is the kulmus. That's what it's called, the, you know, like the pen. Okay? So by Rava, Rava comes and he asks, okay, otachat bidyo, otachat bekulmus, otachat bekalmini mahu. So Rava actually asks a question. When you just told me now that you have to take it out enough in order to write two letters, what about when you have two letters, bidyo, or two letters, Right? Whether it's going to be in all these different things that you're actually writing down, what's going to be the halakha? Teiku. He doesn't have an answer. So he, for us, it was like something pashu. Are we talking, sorry, are we talking about like the minimum uh, ink that to be used for the letter? Yes. The minimum ink in order for you to be chayav if you take it out on Shabbat. So the Mishnah said you're going to be chayav if you're going to take out otiot, in order to write two otiot. So now, what does that mean? So the Brighter said, it doesn't matter whether it's two otiot in ink, in uh, powder ink, two otiot on the actual quill, or two otiot with the two, again, ink which is left over in the keset sofer, which is the uh, ink well, he, he translated it. And which is basically, you know, when they have this little tiny jar and they still have a little bit of ink left over. So the same exact question was asked from Rava, and the Gemara answered, take we don't know. Which means, because again, we're talking about the minimum amount of you need in order to be chayav or hotza'ah. So for sure it has to be writing two otiyot. The question is, in what form does the ink have to be? Okay? Fine. Amar Rava. Rava says, Otsi shte otiyot uktaban keshu mealech chayav. So the person is going to come and he's going to take out two otiyot Right? And he writes in the Rishut Rabbim when he's walking. That means he did not stop whatsoever in order to write it. He was walking the entire time. Still, he's going to be chayav. Why? Ketivatan zoya nachatan. The writing of it is the, which is basically, or the, the akira of it, which is that the ikar of the nachat adio on the ketiva on the niyar, that's the ikar. So it doesn't matter what that means. He didn't stop in between. Because usually, remember, for hotza'a, you need akira v'anachat. You need that you took something out and you placed something down or you stopped because the stopping is considered anacha. Here, the fact that you put it on the paper, that is the anacha. That is the placing it down in the proper place of where it was supposed to be. So even though you didn't stop whatsoever, you're still going to be chayav. The Amar Rava, another halacha. Ot achat uktava v'chazar ve'otzi ot achat uktava. What happens if he took out enough dio? For one letter, and he wrote it in the Rishut Arbim. Okay, and then again he took out another ot, and he wrote it in the Rishut Arbim. So it says over here is going to be patur. My tama, what's the reasoning? Be'inna de apka lebatayta, but when he took out the second one, chasil leshura de kamaita, you were lacking in the first one. Which means at the end of the day, he did two half minachot. When you do hotzah, you have to be chayav for hotzah of taking out two letters. This guy did not do that. He took out for one letter, and he wrote it down when he was going. But then when he went out back and he took a second one, but again he, he wrote it, but again it was lacking. 
So because of such a scenario, it says over here, he's going to be patur. Okay? Another halakha to do with half of a shiur. The Amar Rav, Rav says, Otsi chatsi gruger atachat v'inicha, v'chazam otsi chatsi gruger v'inicha. So you took out of a half a grogeret of food, and you put it down. And then you took out another half, and you put it down. Now remember, it was all done in the same shot, which means that you, you didn't remember in between that it was Shabbat and all these things. The first one, we are going to make it as if that the dog swallowed it, right? Or that it was like burnt before you put it down, and therefore your patur, it is not combined. So again, you see the same concept that the fact that it was half and half, your patur. You're not going to be chayab for such a case. So ask the Gemara, but my why? Hamancha, you did place it down in the Rishut Rabin, and it's still here. So why do I look at it as if a dog ate it or it was burnt? Right now it's here. So a person should be chayab. You did half a melacha, another half a melacha. So says the Gemara, hachi kamar, this is what it means to say. If right now somebody picked up the half of Gurgeret, the first half of a Gurgeret, before putting down the second half of Gurgeret, it becomes that the first one is like it was Niklat, which means it's true. Somebody has to pick up the first one before somebody puts down the second one. Because by doing it that way, they were both not put down at the same time. Because if they're both here, so now they met, it's a problem. But if by the time this, the guy comes and puts down the second one, the first one was already in the air again, there's no anacha here. Okay? Um, Ve'amar Rav, and Rav also says... And we're talking all this in Shabbat. All this is on Shabbat, and all this is Hotza'ah. And all this is Chetzi Shiurim. Okay? So now it says, Ve'amar Rav, Rav says... So says the Gemara, imagine right now somebody comes, takes half of a gurgeret, and he puts it in the Rishut Rabim. Remember, you need a full gurgeret. You took half of food, and you put it in the Rishut Rabim. Then he took out another half, but he didn't put it down. He just passed by it. He passed by the first half. He's going to be chayav. So ask the Gemara, why is he going to be chayav? He never put it down. Remember, you need Akira Vanacha. Akira means I took it out from the Rashuta Yahid, Vanacha, and I placed it down in the Rashuta Rabim. If I right now took it out, but I just passed by the first one, I never put it down. Why am I going to be Chayav? So answers the Gemara, Kigon, Shevira Toch Shlosha. You passed it within three Tfahim of the first one. And therefore, we use the, the Halachot of Levud. Levud means that anything which is within three tfachim of the ground is considered the ground. That's why to do with, for example, sukkah, or all these alachot, or even the uh, avelut. A person sitting down on a little tiny stool that is within three tfachim of the floor is considered sitting on the floor. Or sukkah, when a person has the bottom part which is within three tfachim of the floor, and then another three, and another, you know, you continue going, it's all connected to each other because we use the properties of levud, right? And therefore, it's connected. So for since you went and you passed it over within three tfachim of the floor, right, of the first one, so it's, connected, it's considered that it was connected and you placed it on the ground. That's why you're going to be chayat. So ask the Gemara, V'amar Rava, Toch Shlosha L'Rabbanan, Tzricha Necha L'Gabem, Masho. He says, one second. But I thought according to the rabbis, even if it's going to be Toch Shlosha Tfachim from the ground, they still don't consider that it's kalut, that it's like, you know, grabbed on to the ground. They still need Hanecha L'Gabem, Masho. They still need it. It has to actually be placed on something. doesn't matter what, but it has to be placed on something. So I answer the Gemara, Lakash, that's not a question. Kam bezorek, kam bemavir. Right? The, the last one which is talking about is you're throwing something from one reshut to another reshut. So therefore, there, it's only going to be placed on the ground if it actually landed on something. But here, the first one of Rava, that he's talking about that you passed it on top of something that was within three tfachim from the ground, there we're talking about ma'avir, and there, even if you're walking and you're ma'avir, and you pass it by the bottom one, you're going to be chayav. You don't need it to be placed on something. Okay? Fine. 
Again, we're all back into Hotza, where this is the entire thing is Hotza. Right? Tanu Rabbanah, we learned in Abraita. Otsi chetzi grogere v'chazar otsi chetzi grogere behelem echad, chayav, b'shte alamot, patur. So you took out one grogeret, one half of a grogeret, sorry. And then you took out another half, okay? Behelem echad in one shot, you're going to be chayav. B'shte alamot, in two, two different times, you're going to be patur. Rabbi Yosef, Omer Rabbi Yosef says, behelem echad v'lereshut echad, Hayav. With one helem and one reshut, you're going to be Hayav. Lishter reshuyot. It's going to be two reshuyot. You're going to be patur. Right? But then it's considered like two different shogegs because it was two different properties. So since it's considered two different properties, you're going to be patur. So Amar Rabba Rabba says, Behush yesh chayuv chatat benem, but only if you combine both of them, you're going to be chayuv chatat. Aval, karmelit, in a Karmeli, which is only the Rabbanan, because it's not a Rashut Rabim Duraita. So, no, there's not going to be any Chiyuv. Why? Because since the, the Karmeli, right, it says, um, uh, so it says, if the two Rashiyot of the Rashut Rabim were separated by a Karmeli, right, it's not considered, and therefore he says, you're still going to be Mitzarev to be Chayav. Sorry, because that's what it says over here. Amar Rabba Vehu, it has to be a place of the Chiyuv, Korban Chatab Benehem, which means according to Rabbi Yose, it has to be only if there was a Rishut Yechid dividing the two Rishut Rabbins. And therefore, if you would have taken it from one to another, it would be Chayav Chatat. Then, um, that's when Rabbi Yose said that if you're going to take out a half of Gugeret, another half of Gugeret, you're going to be Patur, because Rishut Mechalkot, the different Rishut, the different properties are going to divide between the two. But a Karmelit is not going to divide between the two. Okay? Fine. Abaye Amar, Abaye comes and he argues, and he says, Afilu Karmelit. Even a Karmelit, Aval Pisla Lo. That means even a Karmelit is going to divide between the two, and you're going to be patut from a Korban. However, Pisla, which is like a bull etz, it's like a piece of wood, which is, you know, filling up the Rishut Arabim, it's not considered a Aefsek. Okay? Rava Amar, Rava is going to come and he's going to say, yeah, Afilu Pisla, even if it's going to be a Pisla, it is going to be considered a um, Afsek, right? That means you're dividing between the different Rishiyot, between the different um, properties. Okay, Vaz the Rava Letame, and Rava is going according to his reasoning, the Amar Rava, but Rava says, Rishut Shabbat, he Rishut Gitin Damya. The Rishut of Shabbat is just like a Rishut of Gitin. Okay, which is basically just like a get, which means to do with a get, we said that a pisla is its own place in itself. So therefore they said that a husband that comes and he lends his wife a place in his chatzed in order to acquire her get, right? So he could give it to her and then she becomes divorced. So if he threw the get and then it fell on top of this pisla in the chatzed, so if it was above 10 fachim, right? Or it was four by four, right? So she's not gonna be uh, divorced because the pisla then is considered its own place, and the husband did not lend it to her, right? Because it's like its own chatzed, right? So he comes and he says, the exact same alakha applies to Shabbat, which means the pisla is also its, its own place, and therefore it's going to divide between two different rishuyot as well. So if you threw, right, chetzi shiur on one side of the pisla and another chetzi shiur on another side of the pisla, it's like throwing it into two different domains, and you're going to be patu, okay? Let me see if there's anything here. I'll show you the pictures. This is what we were talking about. Okay, until now. You have the Rishutra beam and the Rishutra beam and the Rashut Yachid in between, okay? So here you have the Karmelites in between. So the Rashut Rabim, Rashut Rabim, and the Karmelites in between. And then um, we said that this is the Pisla. You see, the Rashut Rabim is here, but there was a Pisla in between. Okay, and this is the Get on the Pisla, the Chatzet. So he threw it on top of this Pisla. Okay? 
if if he threw it and he's landed on the piece that is uh, so that's what we said. If he lent throughout the chaser and the pisla is ten tefachim tall, or if the pisla is four by four, she's not megureshe because he didn't lend throughout the pisla. The pisla becomes its own domain. Right. However, though, if not, then the pisla is considered the part of the same domain, and then she's divorced. Right. Okay. Fine. Next, two dots. Yeah. It says if somebody's gonna take a khol, remember khol is like the makeup for the eyes, right? It's like the you know the I don't know how you call it, right? The seven and nine. Go ahead. <laughs> I just saw what the how they call it by in uh, Morocco. In Morocco, okay. Fine. So that's the khol. So they used to color the eyes in like eyeshadow or eyeliner. I don't know what it is, yeah. So it says over here, Kideli Khol Ainachat. So it's enough even one eye. So says the Gmana, Ainachat. He says, when was the last time you would see a woman putting on makeup on one eye and going outside? You know, like Iowa. You know, what's she, what's she going to do there? You understand? And she's not going to do that. So why would you be chayav on one eye? So says the Gemara, Maravuna Ravuna says, Sheken snuot kochlot ayin and ayin echad. Right? So it says over here, when the snuot come and they go outside, they only, un, they only uncover one eye in the Rishut Rabim. So I, you see, that means here the snuot are even better than the Arab women. The Arab women are coming and they cover both eyes. Uh, sorry, they uncover both eyes. Here, it's even covering one eye. Yeah, so therefore, that snot would only reveal one eye. So that's the only eye that they have to put the, the makeup on. Okay? Interesting uh, in society. Okay? So, mates, mates, so they're going to ask the following question. Mishimum ben Lazar, Mishimum ben Lazar says, Chol, by this Chol, im l'refua, if it's for the fua, then it's enough one eye. But if it's in order to adorn herself, to put on makeup, two eyes. You're right, because in order to put on makeup... Makeup is a... Is a since once makeup is a... Refuah. One more time? Makeup is a refuah? No, 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 no. Not that makeup is a refuah. If you took this khol and you put it in your eye for a refuah, which means it wasn't dafka khol, because a khol could be many different types of makeup. So this was a type of a potion that you're putting in the eye, so even one eye would be enough. Why? Mm -hmm. Because for Rifua, if a woman has a certain problem with one eye, she's not going to put it on both eyes, right? Mm -hmm. However, though, when it comes to do the makeup itself, just for beauty, that it has to be both eyes. Because nobody's going to come and start putting on makeup on one eye. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? Okay. Okay. So it says over here, Tilgema Hilel, uh, okay, uh, Tilgema Hilel, when do we learn this praita? But there has to be two eyes, biraniot, right? Which are basically benotak farim. Yeah. Oh wow! It says over here. Listen to this. Because the people that live in villages are very very small. It's a small community. There's no schok ve kalutrosh mitzvimsham. There's not a lot of lightheadedness and laughter there. So therefore, they wouldn't go out of their houses, cover their faces. And therefore, they would do both eyes, right? So therefore, the shiur of the tzah for them is to do both eyes, which means even without this question, ah, it's certain that you need two eyes, right, for the makeup. And we just learned that was enough one eye. So it all depends. If it's in the city, there's more lightheadedness in the city. And therefore, when girls go out, they would cover one of their eyes. However, though, when it comes to do with in the in the villages where there was not that much lightheadedness because it was a much smaller community, so therefore they would uncover both their eyes. They wouldn't go out with one eye covered. It's just very interesting. I don't know, like, you know, the entire thing about covering even one eye, this or two, I don't know. Okay, fine. Let's continue. Next. Sha'ava Yeah? So if somebody's going to take out wax, so it was enough to cover up a barrel, or cover up a small hole, right, which is in a barrel. Tana kideli ten an pi nekiv katan shel yaim. We're talking about I'm putting on on a small barrel of wine, okay? Devek, which is like a type of a glue. Kideli ten rosh shavshav to put on top of the rosh shavshav. So that was, if you remember the picture with the little tiny thing on the top. So it sounds over here like this. It says Tana berosh shavshav kideli ten rosh shavshav shem rosh kanesh tzadidim. On top of the ones that used to trap the birds. 
So they used to trap the birds. They used to put like a little tiny tree house on top of the little house. That's how they used to trap the bird. They used to put glue on the on the on the stick of wood, and right. the, the birds come to the and they catch it. Yeah, that's what the, a lot of times they do that for, like you know, for rats or mice or all these things. Also, yeah, but mostly for yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, then it says zefet vigofrit. So we're talking about zefet vigofrit. It's a kedila asod nekev. So we're talking about when we're talking about gefet vigofrit. It's in order to do um, right a hole. So Tana, we learned in a bright kedila asod nekev katan. We're talking about in order to make a small little tiny hole. Ah, so we're talking about to close off a hole. Sorry. Listom et nekev katan. But they do on the Kanesh Mechil Kaspit. Okay, fine. Ah, because they want to watch it again. So, like, they want to keep it again. So, what do they do? They close it again. Okay. I don't see anything here. No. Okay. Next. Um... Charsit. So Charsit was a levena ketusha, was like a crushed brick. So the memra, the shura of Yudah, nafish. Are you going to tell me that the shura of Yudah is greater? Hakaimana, the shura of Rabbanan, nafish. We always learned that the shura of Banan was always greater than Rabbi Yehuda. So if right now it said Charsit was kedelaso pikur, and Rabbi Yehuda says to do a pitfut, which is like the tripod. So one second, I thought that Rabbi Yehuda was always a bigger shura, not a Rabbanan. It's not Rabbi Yudah, man. Right, which means Rabbi Yudah was machmid, and to say that mechayev al shiur katan, meaning even a smaller one. Okay, which means that which one's greater? It sounds that Rabbi Yehuda's is much more lenient, and usually Rabbi Yudah's is much stricter. So answers the Gemara: Ema kedel lasul pitfut kirak tana. No, we're talking about that you're doing it in a small oven, a tripod of a small oven. Uh, here it is. Okay, that's the tripod of a small oven. So, in that picture, that one part of the tripod was cracked. So you have enough of the seed in order to, you know, seal it up, to fix the leg of the oven. Okay? Subin. Uh, so this we skip it out because of the two dots, the, the brackets. So Piamu Bet. Piamu Bet says, Tan Rabbanam, we learned in Abraita. Hamotzi se'ar, if you're going to take out se'ar, k'deh gabel bo tatit, it's enough of the se'arot, right, in order to mix it with teat, in order to mix it up with the clay. Okay? Um, then it says over here, la'asot teat is enough la'asot pikur shel sofet zahav, in order to um, close off the mafoach, the small hole, which they use of the zahav, of the people that they make gold. Uh, you remember I told you, they had that, you know, the well or bellows, I forgot what they're called, in order to go inside. Okay? Next, seed, kedel asud, tana, kedel asud, etzma ketana shabbano. We said, in order to, to put on a small finger of a girl, they used to put it in order to make their flesh very much like reddish. So it was much more like a color, like you used to give it a nice color. So Amrav, Yudam Rav, says, Rav, not Yisrael shegiu lepilkan. Not Yisrael, once they got to their age of puberty, but they still weren't at that age. Okay, and then they were afraid, they were embarrassed of the hair, pubic hair, so they wanted to get rid of it. So benot anim toflot otan besid. So the benot anim would take it off with seed, with lime. Benot ashiot toflot mesolet. They used to take it off with solet, right? Which is also takes it off. So it's like fine flour, but it was more soft. It wasn't as coarse as the lime. Benot melachim, but the women of, of kings, right? the princesses would take it off with shemen amor. And that's what they use for Esther, right? So Shem and Amor was the oil of the, how do you say Amor in English? Did not translate, they said Amor. Amor, okay. So the Amor oil, whatever it is. Shnei Amar, Shisha Chodashim Shem and Amor. Ah, so it brings it down from Megillah. My Shem and Amor, Amor, Rav Gura Barchi Amar, Setachat. I don't know, it's a type of an oil. Perfumed oil. Perfumed oil, okay. 
It doesn't actually say it, but it says in Aramaic, it's called Sitachat. Rav Yivya Baraba says, Shemen Zayit Shalubi Shlishi. He says, no, this is really olive oil, but it didn't come out of the third, which means that they didn't even grow a third of the growth, the olives, and then they plucked them and they crushed them. That oil is called Shemen Zayit Shalubi Shlish is the Shemen Amor. Okay? Tanya Rav Yudah, Tanya Rav Yudah says, An Piknon, which is a Mishnah, is that it's going to be pasul for Shemen, for the Menachot, is Shemen Zayit Shalubi Shlish. That is the Piknon. Um, okay. So why do the, the princesses use this? Right? Because not only does it take off the hair, it removes the hair, but it also makes the, the, the skin very soft. Okay? So Rabbi had a daughter. Tafla Eve Eve. She used to put on an Eve Eve. Right? So she took. Ah, that means since she always used to use it on every single limb, he received for her 400 zoos as an, as an adunia. Wow. Okay, that means she became so beautiful that she, he received 400 zoos. Yeah? So there was a goy that was living in his vicinity. Right? He had a daughter. She did the entire body in one shot and she died. So So he went and he said, Amar, the Goy said, Rav Vivai killed my daughter. Right? Why? Because basically he gave me the secret and boom, she died. But he, she, he didn't realize that she did it in the entire body in one shot. That's why. Okay? Amar Rav Nachman, says Rav Nachman, Rav Vivai de Shata Shikra, Rav Vivai that he used to come and he used to um, drink Shekhar, Bayam Benate Tifla. So therefore his daughters needed to take it off Right, in order to have it, because basically what happens is that the shechar beer is mashchir ta'or marbet asiyar. It makes that the skin is darker and it makes that there's a lot of hair. That's what beer does. Anand lo shadin and shechar, but we that we do not drink beer, lo be'am benatan tifla. We don't need it. Why? Because basically it's already um, soft and they don't have that much hair. Rabbi Yuda, man, Rabbi Yuda says kedel asud kilkul. So that was just interesting about beer, no? Okay, fine. Now it says, where in the two dots, where it says, if you does says, if somebody's going to take out lime, it's kedel asud kilkul. What does that mean? And uh, Rav Nechemia said, undafi. My kilkul, my undafi. What are these things? Amar Rav, Rav says, sida uvat sida. Kilkul is sida. Sida is, is like the temples. Okay? So, and undafi is bat sida. This is the tzida, and this is bat tzida. You see, this is one, and this is the other. Okay. So one of them is like you know just like moving it back. The other one is like to remove it. Okay. So it says over here. Yeah, because the first one, which was tzida, was lachlik at to make it backwards, to make it nice backwards. And if it was the Batsi that to actually remove it. Okay, so Lememra, the Shura de Rabbi Yudah, Nafish, are you going to tell me that the Shura of Yudah is greater than Rabbi Nechemia? Akan, we always say the Shura of is much more. So answers the Gemara, Zuta mid Rabbanan, the Nafish of Rabbi Nechemia. You're right. The Shura that Rabbi Yudah said was Be'emet, smaller than the Chachamim, but it was bigger than Rabbi Nechemia. So it's, it, it is correct. It's smaller, but it's bigger than than the rabbis. It's still smaller than the Chemia, though. So it says the Gemara, Maitre, we're going to ask the following question. Amar Rabbi Rabbi says, Nidin de Rabbi Yuda Bechavut. It appears to us a Shura Rabbi Yuda Bechavut, which is basically seed lime, which is Megubah with a lot of water. And the Rabbi Rabbi Nechemia Bechavut seed, the seed which is with, with very little water, which is basically is going to be much thicker. Now you're going to tell me Tzidav Vatzida. Either with the Chavut, you use the same type. You use something which is made with a lot of water. Right? Because that's what you have to use. Say, Alam Ravitsa, Rather Ravitsa says, Amri Divir Rabbi, Ami Landifa. It's a klicheres, which has two holes, right? One on the top and one on the bottom. So when you want to fill it up, you cover the bottom one with lime, and that's what we're talking about. Here. This picture over here. 
So when you want to fill it up, you have to cover this hole. Because if you don't cover this hole, everything's just going to come out. Okay. Next. Matki, flood of Kahana, of Kahana comes and he asks the following question. What, does a person make himself that he's going to lose so much money? Saying at the end of the day, when a person is the Bardat, he's going to start filling up uh, a Chavit, right? He says, at the end of the day, it's the wine is going to get rid of this line, right? And then all the wine will just come out. So what does it help by stopping, by putting like a cork of lime? It's going to come out afterwards. So in Amar of Kahana, but rather of Kahana says, Andifi is Shnatot. What is Shnatot? Ah, Shnatot are like, are like, you know, like measures that come out on the outside for a siman. That, you know, like how much is a liter or milliliters or, or you know, things like that. This is the Shnatot. So they used to have that. But until here, this is for the Keves, the Ail, the Pardis, the Hin. So, you know, they used to make these like little Shnatot. Shnatot is like a shen, like a tea, yentes, you know, that are coming out. So it was like an indent, even in baby bottles nowadays. You have like indents. So that, those are the shnato, those are the indents. Okay, but obviously, uh, you know, we do it inside, and here this is on the outside. Okay? So it says over here, Kiritznan, as we learned in Mishnah, shnatot him ayubahim. It was shnatot in this utensil called the him. Adkan lepar. This is what they needed for shisha lugim for a par. Or adkan ayil, a four lugim for an ayil. Or adkan le keves, which was going to be three lugim for a keves. So each one, had a different amount, okay? So therefore, of the wine. So because of that, they had different measurements. Okay, we buy them or you could answer another answer. My Andifi, what is Andifa? Aputa, it's on the Metzach. No, nothing. I mean, it's over here. So basically on the forehead, there's no hair. So you're not taking it off to take off hair, right? Just like this Bargalil. They went to Babel. They told them, "Come, drosh lan maaseh merkava. Teach us maaseh merkava." Malhe, Amalehu. He told them, "Edrosh lechu kederash v'nechem lechavre." When they made the drosh maaseh merkava, just like the nechemia told his friends, the nafka arita. So when he got up, it came out right at sila a hornet from the wall. Umachte bandip umet, and it bit him on the forehead, and it and he died. The Amalehu min dile dale, right? So he caused it himself. Why? Because since he wanted to teach Maaseh Merkava in the public, that's why he died. Is because obviously Maaseh Merkava has to be done privately, not publicly. So because of that, he was killed. He calls it on himself. Okay? Fine. Mishnah. Adama. If somebody's going to take out Adama, which is again, Tit Adom, right? Which is red clay, right? Which they use usually as seals. Kachotam Amar So it has to be like the size of a Chotam, which is used for the Sakim of, you know, like the business bags. Has to be like a seal for that. These are the words of Rekiva. Chachamim Onim Chachamim says, Bechotam Igarot. It has to be like the Chotam of the Igarot, of letters. Okay? His son is going to take out Zevel, the Chol, a duck. So he's going to take out fertilizer or um, very thin sand, right? Like, uh, you know, like Chol. Kedela Zabel Kelach Shakruv. That's be enough for, uh, to fertilize the Kelach, uh, uh, you know, one, I don't know how you call it. Of kruv, of cabbage. Stock. Stock of cabbage. Stock, thank you. One stock of cabbage. These are the words of Rekiva. Chachamim Urim Kedele Zabel of Kerisha, right? Which is here it says it's a kaflot. Usually Kerisha are leeks. But here it's translating it as. Yes, leeks. Leeks. Okay, very good. Chola gas, if it's thick sand, Kedele ten al melo kafsid, in order that he's putting enough in a in a, in a, in a kaf of a lime, in a spoon of lime. Kane, he's going to take out a reed, the lasu kurmus, in order to make a kurmus. Um, how do you translate kurmus again? The, it's like the pen. I forgot how you translated it. It's a pen. A pen. A pen. Okay. Vimaya veo mirusas. The pen with the feather. Yeah, the pen with the feather. I forgot. There's another word for it, no? Yeah. It was used to be a pen. Quilt. Quilt. A quilt. 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 Okay, very good. Vimaya aveo mirusas. If it was going to be mirutzav saduk, which means that it's not fitting to make it like that, it's in order to cook a beitza kalash of beitzim when it's trufa and atul bel pas, and then they come and they put it in a, in a machvat and they put it in a pan. Okay, so let's see what we're talking about. 
says the Mishnah, Al Melo Kaf Seed, right? Tana, Kedel Liten Al Pi Kaf Shel Seedim. We're talking about what is that, the, this Shiur? We went straight to almost to the end. Yeah, Kedel Liten Melo Kaf Seed, where we, must, we skipped out the entire first part. So it says it's enough in order to put in the Kli Barzel that the Sayadin, the people that make lime, they come and they give it to you. So man tana bichol mal lezid. How do we know that sand is good for lime? So Rav Chassar says Rav Chassar Rabbi Yehuda, it's Rabbi Yehuda. The time was learned in a brayta. Lo yasud adam beto besil. A person should not put his house with lime nowadays after the churban betamidash because of avelut on Yerushalayim. Ela imkani lebo unless you're going to mix with it teven or chol. Whether we're talking about grains or sand. Okay, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yehuda says teven is going to be mutar to mix with it. But asur with chol, why? Neshu traksid, because it makes it very strong, right? So therefore, what happens is, is that this beauty on the line is not good. Because there, you're not allowed to do it because of the churban bet amidash. Rabba, my Rabba says, no. Filu temer rabbanan, even if you want, you could say it's a rabbis, kil kulo zeutikuno, which means that the fact that the chol, that the sand comes and it makes it more black, this slime, so it's actually uh, considered like a tikkun masid, right? So because of that, the amount of sand that you're adding to it is important and you're going to be chayav on the otza. Okay? Then we said the kane, the reed, in order to make for it like a pen or the quill. So it says, Tana, we learned on right, it has to get to kishet v'otav. That means it has to be the size that it gets to his knuckles. So by Ravashi, Ravashi comes and he asks, Keshel Yonu Keshel Tachton, the top knuckle or the bottom one? We have the picture. This is the top knuckle because the quill or the pen goes into the top knuckles, and this is only going to the bottom knuckles. So that's the Keshel Yon or Keshel Tachton. Right? But at the end of the day, we have Ksharim. Each one of these is called Ksharim. Right? That's why Maima Charonim also, a lot of people that make a mistake, they do a Keshel Bishon. It's to be minimum until the Shani. The Ben Ishchai says even until Shlishi. Okay? So therefore, that's also for Maima Charonim. So it says over here, Teiku, we don't have an answer. That means we don't know if it's the pen has to be big enough in order to get to this one or to this one. Okay? Vima Yave, if it was very thick, so it's enough in order to cook an egg, right, which is inside of a pan, and they put it. Tana Trufa B'Shem Nantuna Milvas. We're talking about that it was already mixed with oil and put in a, in a pan, which it gets cooked very quickly. So, Amar Le Mor B'Rav the Ravina the Revrei, Mishmi Alecha Beitza Kalamayi, do you know what a beitzat kala is? Amalei, he told them, beata d'tziltzila, beitzat of katan. We're talking about a very small, uh, a bird, a small bird, that egg of that small bird. That's what we're talking about, a small one. No pictures. Okay. So, my time out's reasoning. Mishum, the zutra, because since it's so small, ema d'tziparta. So why don't you just say it's a small bird also as well? So Ishti kept quiet. So he says, did you actually hear of this? So this is what Rav Sheshat said. It's a Beitzat Tarnegolet. So why is a Beitzat Tarnegolet of a rooster called a Beitzat Kala? So he says, The easiest egg to cook is a Beitzat Tarnegolet. Okay? So what's the difference between that all the 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 shiurim are going to get it in here by kabitza and here it's going to be kabitza so answers amale hachim am nachman we go get a bitza kala says no you're right it's a grogeret of a bitza kala which means it's part of a bitza tarnegolet like a grogeret that's the size of it okay fine so we finish until the mishnah um we continue bezrat hashem